we have this time Shmini, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where the Ramban picks up this pasuk, but there is one topic here. The fear that a person always has to have because of his possible sins. Where does that come from? Well, Perik Tes uh, Zion. What do you think? It's it's a it's a Aharon. Hmm? Like chapter nine, verse uh, seven is where he is aiming at, but I don't know how that relates. I mean, there's a medrash about uh, Aharon being worried about going, right? Because he thought he wasn't appropriate. So it was a very, very exciting time because, you know, the climax of the Mishkan's inauguration is coming, right? And uh, uh, Moshe, after practicing for the six, seven days, mm -hmm. on the eighth day, tells Aaron, okay, you. You're ready. You. Uh -huh. And Aaron was afraid to go, mm -hmm. right? So I think maybe this is it. Nine... Seven. Do you have nine seven? Moses said to Aaron, yeah. "Come here to the altar." Okay. Come near, right? Yes, Crap. Near. So that is a that is a seven. Uh, when Moshe says, "Come near," Zion. First of all, he declares to the people, "Listen, this is what I have been commanded. This is what God has commanded, and you do this." all these sacrifices, and Hashem will appear to you. Mm. He promises them this, yes? Correct? Yes. Until, yes. until the seventh. Until the seventh. You this mitzvah, and Hashem will appear to you. Then he goes to Aaron. That's the first he tells the people. That's between one and seven. The first mm -hmm. six sukim, seven sukim. Yes. Then the sixth, the seventh sukim, seven pasuki, now comes to Aaron. Karav means come close. Okay. Approach. Yeah. Approach the Mizbeach. Do like Hashem has commanded. Right? So what's this Krav? Come close to the Mizbeach. So I bet you that's what the Ramban points out. But there's a there's a there's a Medrash that he had to he had to prod him, he had to push him, he had to encourage him to go and do. Mm -hmm. Aharon was standing back. Uh, why was he standing back? The, maybe the Rabbah is going to discuss that, right? I mean, that's the whole idea, I think. I just guessed that that's what it was. Yeah, if you you want to do that one right away? Okay. If you look at the Ramban in Pasuk Zayin, you have the oh. Ramban in page, in page, uh, page Mem Gimel of the Ramban and Vayikra. Mem Gimel, which is pretty much close to the beginning. Right? Well, I didn't uh, get one of those. I should also pick up one. Okay. Um, you get it? You got the Ramban? Okay. Ram Gimel. Ram Gimel. Forty three. Ram Gimel. Got it? Yeah. So on the bottom yeah. of the page, Zion somewhere, right? Yeah. It says like this, Vatan, Krab, why way, does it say by the way this it come close? It's sort of a the reverse of uh, when when uh, the um the burning bush when Moshe was hesitating, uh -huh. and uh, Aaron came to um, take over for him, bail him out, whatever, whatever it is. Um, here, here. I mean, it's sort of, sort of, sort of. It is interesting. First of all, the word, though, the word. I thought you were going to point out something. Our, Moshe was going to go up the mountain when he saw the burning bush. Yes, Hashem said. Al tikrab halom, mm -hmm. do not come forward here, mm -hmm. do not come closer here. Mm -hmm. He was already partly up the mountain, remember? He says, don't come up here, which the Ramban there pointed out, right, that he hadn't yet arrived at the special Madrega, so he could not come close. Uh, here, he tells Aaron, krab, you're going right into the, into the uh, Holy of Holies, and he's going to the Mishkan here. So... It's the opposite of what he was told not to come close. He's now telling Aaron with that same word, Krav. Mm -hmm. But but you're right in a way. When he Moshe continued to refuse Hashem's offer that he should be the person who would take the uh, you know being leading the Jewish people out, he said, "Not me, not me, not me." And then Hashem said, "You know, I want to know 
I want you to know that um, Aaron, I'm going to tell him that you were chosen, and he will be happy in his heart that you were chosen, right? So now it's Moshe who is hopefully, hopefully happy in his heart that Aaron is chosen to be the one who will serve in the temple. Although he, we saw it in the Shalshelis, in, in the previous parasha, that there was some hesitation on the part of Moshe to, to give it up. Because he was working in the Bishkan for, for a whole week, and doing it himself. So it must have been very special, right? Maybe. And, uh, what, and what do you mean by the Shalshelik? Tell him, tell him what you meant. Shalshelis is um, when someone hesitates, hesitates um, to give something up or to... Like find, yeah. find the puzzle. Find the something? puzzle. In the, this past week, there was a, there was a, a tune. You heard him. He was, he was leading. Did you read? No, but no. I, no. I, I didn't do it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And that is usually meant to be indication of somebody who's struggling and doesn't feel comfortable. Is a little bit struggling with his feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Which, which was the Pasuk? Inside? Vayishchat. Vayishchat. That he sacrificed, that he, he slaughtered the animal. The last, the last time Moshe the last, the last sacrifice that he did, right. he was reluctant because it would be the end of his, of his service. That's what the people say. Right? The end of his service before the end of his bath. Where is it? Vayishchat. Hashem says to Moshe, take Aaron and his children and give them, put the oil of the anointment on, it, on them. Here it is. Where is it? Which, which one? Give me a chapter and verse. Ches, Chaf Ah, so he does that. He anoints them, the sons of Aaron and Aaron, mm -hmm. and then, and then, and he goes and he does his last. What? What is? What, is, what verse is? Verse twenty-three, eight twenty-three. This is the last step of inaugurating Aaron. Eight twenty-three. 823. He's slaughtered. And he, and he, he, saw, he saw, slaughtered the, uh, right? Yes. And the, the animal. Right. And he took the blood and he put it on the ear and on the, and on the uh, thumb and on the foot of Aaron and his children to inaugurate them. This was the last step. So that Vaishcha is a... He's forcing himself, he's hesitating, he's, right? Why is he hesitating? So the Medrash says that this is tough for the hesitation because this is the last. He will now, until now he's been working in the Beit HaMikdash, in the, in the Mishkan. Now he has to hand it over to Aaron. So, so, in a way, he is more hesitating, giving up this role that he had, because it's so precious to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aaron, when he heard about Moshe's being chosen, was happy in his heart that he was that uh, that Moshe was chosen and not him. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. But we are now talking about Moshe encouraging Aaron. Okay, you've been inaugurated. We've been told that this is the last day. This is the time when Hashem will appear to everybody. Come, go ahead, and come forward to the Mizbeach and to do the sacrifices, which will be the climax, right? Bringing Hashem down. So why does he have to encourage him? So if you look at the Ramban on 9-7, right? Mm -hmm. Chapter 9-7, mm -hmm. right? And it also says, by the way, in the next Pasuk, or the same Pasuk, Krav uh, Mizbeach, and then Vayikrav, Pasuk number 8 starts with and... Aharon did come forward. The word Vayikrab again. Pro, uh, approach. See that? Number eight starts? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the Ramban wants to know the following. According to me, in my opinion, 
the Ramban, mm -hmm. on seven. According to my opinion, Yomar, Krav El Tzafon HaMizbeach Vaasei Sham Chatat HaOlam. Right? What he meant to say, according to the plain, no, no special, uh, you know, emotional feelings, but just he wanted to tell him that when you go to the Mizbeach, go to the northern corner of the Mizbeach, where that is the place, the appropriate place to sacrifice the Ola, the special sacrifice. Ma Moshe came, but Derek it, this is a short form of his discussion with him, Shekvar Yada Aaron. So Aaron already knew because he watched Moshe do it every day. So, Krav, you come forward and you do it this time, right? Mm -hmm. Aval, but. So, so that's, a, that's without any uh, special hidden meaning, right? But, he says, in Torah's Koning, which is the Medrash Shalacha on Vayikra, they, the, our rabbis have been sort of sensitive to this use of the word krav, come forward. And they told us a story, basically, a parable. What is this similar to? A parable, you know, mm -hmm. metaphor. Uh, no, an allegory, I suppose you would say. This is like a king who married a woman. Now, the woman is below the king, right? I mean, this is the king of the king of the entire country, and he marries a woman. She was shy, right? She was a little embarrassed. I mean, the king is such a high and mighty person, and he's married me, and I, am I worthy? Am I, right? So she's, and, and this, is, this is the beginning of their marriage life. So the first night, so her sister, the bride's sister comes into the queen, the, the married queen, who is hesitating that I should go to the, to the, to the bedroom of the king. Amrala, so she said to her, Achoti, my sister, Lama lo Why did you, how did you get married? What did you get married for? Not to go and serve the king and be his, his, his mate? Hagisi uh, make yourself bold, bold in yourself, right? Uboi and come, shamshi et amelech, and you know, have intercourse with the king. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a fearful thing for this woman to go into the king, right? And she is being encouraged by her sister. So this is a little bit. They, the Chachamim wanted to say this is similar to what's going on here, right? Aharon is going to be now. <laughs> it's not marriage to Hashem, but, but, you know, he's going to come close, closer than anybody, because this is the time of the real korbanot to Hashem, right? He's going to come and consecrate the Kedushkan. Kach amar lo Moshe, so Moshe says to him, Aaron, Achi, my brother, lama nifcharta liyot kohen gadol? Why do you think you were chosen to be the kohen gadol? Isn't it because you were chosen in order to serve before before God? Bolden yourself, come forward and do your service. Okay, so that's another. So now we're talking a natural, a natural hesitation on the part of. So you've got two two ideas so far. One of them is simple. He already gave him, he already gave him the instructions before. And now he's telling, go ahead and you do it now. That's all, no special meaning, right? Chachamim, who say, this is the natural reservation that a person would have before doing something so awesome before God. And Moshe is telling him, like the sister of the bride, of the king, he's telling him, no, you were chosen for this, and you were chosen for this, and why, well, why else were you chosen if not to do it? So go ahead, make yourself bold and get over it. Get over it and do it. That's two. That's number two. Now comes the third. Yeshomri. You see that uh, more uh, pinky? Yeshomri. This is incredible. Now, this is a medrash that is very awesome, emotional, right? Yeshomri. Haya o Aaron roe et hamizbeach kitavlit shor. What's going on? Oops. He saw, when he looked at the mizbeach from the outside, he says, I'm going to go in there now. I know my job, right? I'm supposed to go in there. I'll be by myself, right? When he looked in there, he became a little frightened. He had a delusion, uh, a premonition in front of his face. The Mizbeach, you know, has 
horns on it. Yeah. It has corners. Corners, right? Yeah. The Mizbeach appeared to him, and it's got four, right? Four sides. So it appeared to him like a bull, like an ox. An ox has four legs, has horns, right? So, I mean, of course, it's not, it's not, it doesn't really look like a Mizbeach. But in his mind, this is what he saw. Suddenly, flash in front of his face. And he was afraid of it. Why? Why was he afraid of the bull? He wants to move. Leo. Just because, like you and me, just like you and me would be afraid of a bull. Because if you if you see a, a, an ox, a bull, you so might, you're you're afraid might, because you're gonna. Yes, I'm saying. You. Is that why he was afraid? Because everybody's afraid of a bull. Give me another reason. Why Aaron? No, that is. The, we always are, are afraid from these kind yeah, of but don't you remember, nice. don't you, I'm sure you remember. Aharon was the one who was in charge of the people when Moshe was up on the mountain. Oh, yeah, I got he, it. Because he, he said to them, so, bring me the jewelry and I will yes. make something for so you. So I was thinking, maybe he is afraid of that. that he, 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 do, he did in the past with a the, great sin. And, and it's weighing on his of, mind, is weighing on his mind, and he has a guilty conscience. Uh -huh, exactly. Even though God has already that chosen him. That is half. Him. Even though God has already chosen him, right? right? Even though God has already forgiven the people. Even though the people are moving forward. Even though God is now going to come and consecrate the Mishkan. This is the marriage, right? This yeah. is the end. I mean, you, you're over, right? Nevertheless, he was going in, and suddenly he saw this bull. Similar to the feelings of the his memories. Memories flashback. Yeah. It's incredible, right? Yeah. Hayami Chorayman, he's afraid of him. Now, you're, you're afraid of a sin. It's a, it's a common psychiatric, it's a common psychiatric phenomenon. People who have a terrible, guilty feelings and they have some of these fantasies. The sin itself takes on a personality in a dream or in a, in a vision. And the dream itself is an aggressive enemy trying to destroy the person because right. they feel guilty and they feel that they should be punished. So they right. create, their mind creates a premonition of, a, of the avenging angel, uh -huh. right, who's coming against him. Right. So here he's seeing this short, right? Nichnas mm Moshe -hmm. slow. So Aaron is going. He's supposed to be there by himself doing his job. Moshe is looking from the outside and he sees Moshe, Aaron kind of trembling. He's not going. Right? So he goes over to him. Amarlo, he said to him, Aaron Achi, my brother Aaron, Lo tira mi masha Don't be afraid from that which you are afraid. Now that's an amazing thing to say. What do you mean? Don't be afraid from what you're afraid of. He knows what he's afraid of. He knows, he knows. very well what he's afraid of. That's right. <laughs> you know, you can't, if somebody's afraid of a snake, or afraid of a, of a cliff, you don't say, don't be afraid of the thing that you're afraid of. I mean, it's dangerous, it's dangerous. Of course, you should be afraid, do you know what I mean? Right? But he knows. Moshe understands what's going on. Same thing that happened with and he says, listen, and the serpent. He says, listen, don't be afraid from that which you're afraid. Hagesta bold in yourself, ubo kravilav. Force yourself to go towards him. Him. He didn't say Elam is Bayach. Krabi Lav. Go you see the you see that bull? Yeah. You're afraid of the bull? You I don't want you to be afraid of the bull. Go to the Eat bull. To the bull. Go to the bull. You can conquer you you have conquered the bull. You have been forgiven. You're beyond it, right? Ulakah Hamar, and that's what he meant, Krab Elamizbeach. Go to the Mizbeach, and then the Torah says, Vay Krab Elamizbeach. This next Pasuk can eat, right? And Aaron does go to the Mizbeach, Bizrizut, with a, with a speed, with alacrity, right? Now, what's going on here, he's trying to now explain, right? What's this story? What's going on? So it's the time zeh, the explanation of this whole thing. Let's see, what does he mean? What is, what is this time zeh? Do you see the footnote down below? Uh, Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. What, what do we mean? 
כי בעבור שהיה אהרון קדוש השם, because Aaron is the holy one of God, ואין בנפשו חטא, זולתי מעשה העגל, he did not have any sin except for that one עגל. היה החטא ההוא קבוע לו במחשבתו. This is such a, the way he's explaining it is like a psychiatrist talking, right? It was stuck in his mind. Yes. כי עניין שנאמר, like the Pasuk says in David HaMelech in Tehilim, חטאתי נגדי תמיד. My sin is constantly before me. Before me. Yes. And of course, people say that David HaMelech was talking about his big failing yes. with, with, with uh, Batsheva, right? Mm-hmm. And he's, that sin is in front of me always, right? V'haya nidmelo, and it was, he was imagining כאילו צורת העגל שם מעכב בכפרותיו. What's the, what's the עגל doing? That the figure of the עגל is going to prevent his atonement. The, the, one of the קורבנות is going to be an atonement קורבן. For him, look at פסוק 7 again in the Torah. ויאמר שזה הדבר שהוא ציווה להשם. קרב אל המזבח ועשה את התתרה. And make your sin offering. ואת עולתך, וכפר בעדך ובעד העם. אטום for you and for the people. So he's going to say, I'm the one who brought upon them this great sin of the ego, right? He's guilty, he feels he's guilty. He should have stopped them. He should have been able to approach them in a different way. He should have been able to be a better leader. He shouldn't have given in, whatever, right? So he feels responsible, right? So now he's going to be the one who's going to go in there and do the atonement for himself and for the people. He doesn't feel like he's capable. So he's not making a tournament for Moshe himself? Because he's saying, go and, and make Moshe, a tournament. Make for a tournament for Because yourself, he's, he's making for, for Aaron, Aaron and the and people. For all but of us. What about Moshe? He's the one of the people. What? He's one of the people. What do you mean? Including Everybody Moshe. else. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Everybody other than Aaron is the people. All right. Who else is? Yeah, there's nobody outside of that group. Well, there's either Aaron or other people. Well, Moshe wasn't that part of it. No, okay. but, but whatever kapara, it's, this kapara here is for everything that anybody ever did. But Moshe La is, 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 is stealing from somebody's uh, talking not nice to your wife, I mean, whatever. I mean, all, all the kinds of atonement. Not, yes, but Moshe... Not just the atonement for the ego, right? the atonement for everything. But he, Moshe, is, Moshe is, he, he didn't. He didn't do the ego, but, but he... Uh, He, uh, and, and here Moses he, he is telling him, he passed go by a for you man. are for the people. So, it's my he, question. Moshe passed by a man and didn't say hello nicely. That's a sin. He needs atonement. Aaron's, when Aaron goes in, when the Makoim Gadol goes on Yom Kippur, mm-hmm. to give, make an atonement for the people, it's not a specific sin that all the people did. It's for everything that anybody ever did. I mean, it's, it's part of it. Everybody joins in together, praying for atonement, the, and the representative of their atonement is the Kohen Gadol. Maybe one of the Tachan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, not, uh, it's not necessary here for it to be the same sin for everybody. Okay. Okay. Right? So, don't be right. So he thought that this would, that his own sin that's before his mind makes him not capable of getting atonement for anybody. לכן אמר לו, that's why Moshe said to him, הגס דעתך, bold in yourself, שלא יהיה שפל רוח, don't be too lowly, כל כך, שכבר רצה אלוהים את מעשיו, because God has already chosen you, right? God has already chosen you and invited you to do this, so therefore you should know that you are capable of bringing an atonement for yourself and for the people, because you have been accepted, right? You would not dare to do this yourself, but you have been chosen. Hashem chose you. Mm-hmm. So, of course, make yourself ready. So, that, you have three pshatim, right? Mm-hmm. One, plain and simple, just giving him instructions. Why, why, number why, two, why telling him where you should go specifically. I'm sorry, that's number two. That's number one. Number two is he was just stam shy like anybody else before doing something so awesome like the bride. And number three, specifically, he's afraid and he he's, he's feels guilty and he feels incapable because of the ego. Well, what here, do, what do you say, want? Do not, do not be of such low spirits. Yeah. Right. That you low do not spirits. feel deserving 
low spirit means uh, you feel you feel so humble that you don't deserve to be the one to bring the atonement for the people and for yourself because you don't deserve it. You're a sinner. So it's low spirits. That's what low spirit means. Yeah, shval ruach. It's a just, it's just an expression for shval ruach. Ruach, 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 ruach in general is a, is a yeah low spirit, low character, low feeling, low yeah. What's bothering you about that? What's the problem? Mm. It's humble, it's shameful, feeling ashamed of yourself. Don't feel like that. Right. Right? Now it comes to another word. Acherim mefashim. Shehaya satan mar elochen. That it was the evil, uh, you know, uh, satan, whatever it was, who was showing him this, this bowl, this image of the bowl. Kemosham rusham aharon achi. Now this is going to be very difficult. I think this is, is like a, like a borrowing some picture is... from Yahushua. Remember the Queen Gadol? No, I don't remember. What do you mean? Um, in the time of the of the of the of the kings, when he goes up, and, and Satan, was, Satan wants to Satan the, wants to, uh, to destroy Christian him. So why Hashem says to him, "Don't go after him. He's the one left over. The one left over." Yeah, but how is it connected here? Because Hashem is to me. Same is like that. He tells us here that we should look mm-hmm. at Achrei Mot Ted Zayin Chet. I think yes. it might mean you might mean something. You must put uh, something into the mouth of Sat- Satan. Satan. What does that mean? To seal it. To seal, to seal it. What does that mean? Shoot. What does it mean? In case, in case he brings up an accusation against you. Right? Yeah. It's like it's the same relation. With so how is this different than before? I mean, in other words, he doesn't feel guilty. He just. I mean, he feels guilty, but if it were. So, yeah, what? But the Satan is part, is uh, intensifying it. Yeah. He used to, the Ramban says it's something similar to the Sa'ir Lazazel. You know, the, the, the uh, Sa'ir on Yom Kippur that is sent out to the, to the wild and thrown off a cliff. Mm-hmm. As though Hashem is commanding us to give some kind of a bribe to keep the Satan busy mm-hmm. so that we could go ahead and pray. Uh, it's a, it's a, some kind of a mystical idea that I don't understand. But that's what he's trying to say here, that the Satan was uh, wanting something for himself. So he said, okay, give him something. I, okay, I don't, I don't understand this. Maybe you could explain it to me one day. Does he have any comment there? What, what's... No, um, let me see. This passage shows that Satan was indeed attempting to interfere with Aaron's ability to achieve autonomy and as such lends support to the others, who who are the others, who explain Aaron's hesitancy uh, to approach the altar in a similar vein. Thus Aaron's offerings atone only for his own sins and not and not for the peoples. When Moses told him that offering those sacrifices would be would provide atonement for yourself and for the, and people, for the people, he meant that Aaron's sacrifices would cleanse Aaron of his own sins and thereby right. enable him to offer the people sacrifices which would atone for them. Mm-hmm. Thus in an indirect sense, Aaron's offering did pave the way for the people to receive their atonement. Okay, right, correct. That I understand. This principle. You understand what he said? Yeah. Let me see. It's related. Uh, it one should come to an atonement for the guilty one. So this principle is found in Joma, yeah. where the Gemara explains why the Kohen Gadol in his young people confession must first confess his own sins own sin. and, and that then his family. The sin of the people. The idea and is then that he must first cleanse himself right. of sin and only then go on to cleanse 
of that's, Israel. That's correct. And that's why, according to the third shot here, Aaron himself felt like he was guilty, that he didn't finish cleansing his own sin because of the Egel. So how could I be the one who is going to be the instrument of the atonement for the people? I shouldn't be the one, right? Mm -hmm. So he says, yeah, you've been chosen for that, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're right. Yeah, so then you vetam chaper at the very end. You see that to three lines from the bottom? And the reason that he says to him, first atone for yourself, and then for the people, first yours. Right? First you atone for yourself when you're with your sacrifices. And then for the people. That only a person who is already cleansed should then be the one who atones for the guilty. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, that's a very interesting thing, right? Hmm. In other words, according to this last, last uh, chat, Aaron had, uh, was able to, um, to conquer his own guilty, guilty conscience. He's told to. He was, he was encouraged by Moshe enough that he overcame it. Or, or he, yeah. or he didn't even need He was maybe, pushed. Maybe he didn't need I mean, you're assuming that the, um, you're assuming the, the Moshe's... Uh, Encouragement is the yeah, with, is the that's clincher. That's a different shot. That's crap. That's what he, I thought. That's what the Ramban was saying. He said never because even though you are feeling inadequate, don't do that. He said to him, But But in other words, um, the third you're talking about the last shot. The third, yeah. About the satan. Yeah. That I don't understand. The fourth chat, yes, yeah. is the one about the Satan, that he was telling him to offer something for the Satan. In other words, um, uh, it's going what to mean? the third chat, um, Aaron couldn't do it and Moshe had to push him. Right, because, because he felt ashamed of his own si original sin. Right, according to the fourth shot. That's the fourth shot. The fourth shot. He, 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 he was ready. able to ready do it. But, but the Satan, the Satan said, oh, whoa, Aaron, you are... I'm the, not going to let you? Or, yeah, you, 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 are, are, you are the guilty one. Okay, so and what did he do? So how did Aaron feel? Not good. W meaning... That he feels guilty. Yeah. So he didn't overcome. Well, and Moshe tells him, right? Throw him a uh, bone. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I, okay. Well, Stuff his mouth. Stuff his mouth. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand the the mechanism. Mm -hmm. But this one is uh, is still as though Aaron is afraid, right? Aaron is. Well, he, he wasn't. He was ready to conquer it on his own. On his own. He could have. Yes, yeah, but have. but the satan was interfering. Right. Well, however, that is done. Right. I mean, I always thought of satan being an internal uh, phenomenon in a person's own being, but here it's as though it's somewhere out there, a satan. If you if you were of the mind of like the possessed or uh, of the uh, of the uh, what you would call the exorcist, right? There would be here, there would be the Satan who is holding him up and stopping him. A being, some kind of a spiritual being, a psych, a mystical being out there stopping him. And Moshe says to him, you go and fight him and do it anyway, right? Something like that. But that is inside him. And it's not inside him, according to the last one. Okay. The last shot, it's, it's throw, like him, throw him inside. away, and do, you fight him, do, do, you know, stuff his mouth. Mm -hmm. Toy the one. <laughs> Mm, kind of. Do you feel like there's such a thing as a, an external Satan who... I mean, there's a mystical idea, I don't know. Do you feel there's such a thing as an external Satan who can do things, stop you from doing things, possess you, hold you back? Pinky. 
Well, Satan can never do that to you. Since Adam did, um, did uh, cause the uh, people of Israel to... Uh, to so with the Egel, yes, so therefore there uh, might be... Uh, and even though Hashem um, forgave him and chose him, nevertheless, there's this one of these evil angels that... I mean, you know, there are mystical ideas like this. Every time a person who does a sin, he's created a new evil angel that stands there accusing him. You know what I mean? Like a but there are could, mystical ideas like this. Could be could be the same the same person the same people that Bilam met, remember, when he was trying to curse the Jewish people. He met with Satan, the yeah. angel. Yeah. So the Torah doesn't say so, but you read this somewhere. Mm, no, I am coming as Satan to you, he said, the Torah. I'm coming to you as Satan, and as an adversary. Okay? No, as I am Satan. No. no, as Satan, he said. Well, all right. There is an angel. Okay. All right. I don't know. I, I don't understand. So we can borrow one. this idea from it. From I it. Yeah, I don't understand the last one. Um, hmm. What do you think about this uh, idea? The last idea is interesting. You said you read it. That first the person has to cleanse himself and then he can be the instrument to cleanse others, right? That's the way. That's right. Mm. Yeah, you agree? Yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, I mean, it's not appropriate? I, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm trying to think. Let's say everybody does a sin. Mm -hmm. Ego. Mm -hmm. Everybody does a sin. And there's a leader among them who feels strongly guilty, he feels terrible about it, right? So he encourages everybody to do tshuva together. Mm -hmm. And he says to them, I am a sinner just like you. Let us do tshuva and let us work together to become cleansed. Is something wrong with that? No. But we are now saying, that Aaron is told, first, first, you go and atone for yourself. Okay. Then, when you are cleansed, then you come and atone for the people. But he already, That's different. He already made, he already did Shuba? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, when? Of course, of course, right away. Yeah, sure. I mean, the people also did Shuba. The people also have done Shuba. So what does atonement here mean? Uh, so he, Listen, he, I, 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 I have trouble. I have trouble with the whole word. I mean, what does atonement mean? Obviously, they did tshuva because Hashem forgave them, salachti, right? And Hashem had forgiven them, and that's why He chose them to make the mishkan, and that's why Hashem said to them, "Okay, I'm going to come down and appear to you." And now there's the last step of the people who already did tshuva and showed their enthusiasm for building a mishkan. They did tshuva, right? I mean, we're not talking about guilty people. There's a, the atonement, the kapara, is a very difficult word because uh, after tshuva, right, and after Hashem forgives you, there's kapara. Now, for this, for this, we have to. I mean, I, 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 I don't feel adequate, but Rav Salvechik has a whole book of Allah tshuva, for example. What, what does kapara mean? What does kapara mean? It's like a new, a new address. For the people. I don't know. Like Adam. I don't know. Doesn't say, there's no word of kapara in Adam. But he but, but what, is, old, what is kapara? And you and you clothes. Yeah, what does it mean? What does it mean? The Ramban has a mention that when Yaakov, we, we read it not long ago, Yaakov goes to meet Esau for the first time. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we read it once upon a time. Uh, remember in Yes. When he goes to him, he says, why did you send me these gifts? Asaf says. Pinky, you remember? Mm -hmm. So he says, because I said to myself, Achapra Panav, I will atone my face, his face. I will atone myself before his face so that I could see him. Right? That's what he said. That's what he said. The first time that the word in the Torah used kapar, kapara, is there, where Yaakov says this to Asaf. So everybody wonders, what does that mean? 
does does Yaakov mean to say that he is guilty of taking the blessings of his father? Most people say, no, 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 he never was, because he feels that's what he deserved, he feels that's God's destiny, he feels that that's what he had to do. So it's not that he's asking for forgiveness for something. What does kapara mean? So there the Ramban says, I want you to know that the meaning of kapara is not forgiveness. The meaning of kapara is not being sorry. The meaning of kapara, and that's Yom Kippurim, he says, is not meaning being sorry. Kapara means... I bring a ransom, a ransom, a gift, in order to allow me to come close to you and see your face. To repair the brother of your religion? To, to allow me to come and see your face. I, I, in, 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 in his view, Yom Kippurim is not to forgive because you have to do tshuva before Yom Kippur. Right? Sarah to make tshuva. To do your good work. And Hashem forgives you. But a person who is forgiven is still, you know, you forgive me, right? You forgive me. You say, you're not angry at me anymore. You're not going to punish me anymore. I don't owe you anything. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, you tell me. Right? But I feel like I don't deserve to touch you. Because right. we're not the same as we were before. Right, mm -hmm. right exactly. Something right. was right. something. Something has been changed. I, I, I can't. Cool. I can't yeah. look you in the face. You forgave me. Can't look you in the face. Kapara is a a cleaning away, like a, a, a refreshing, shining up the, uh, the 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 cleaning up the relationship again. Right. Kapara panav. So, if you want to say that that's what's going on here. Right? This is the kapara. He, they've already been forgiven. Remember, they, they can't be guilty people who are going to be forgiven now. Forget about it, because they've already been forgiven. Mm -hmm. The whole process of making the Mishkan was already finally finished tshuva, right? Tshuva is not the problem. The problem is, Hashem is going to come down. Right? How are you going to feel co confronting and letting yourself look God in the face, so to speak, right? Maybe. How can I do it? How can I do it? So, Aaron now feels like, how can I be kapara? How, how can I, right? I feel still ashamed even though I'm not guilty and even though I'm not going to be punished. Well, I'm not sure about it. But I can't, be, I can't be looking him in the face, according to this kapara, this is its own atonement. And... Uh, and uh, that, he says here, that somehow you have to be ready to do it yourself and before you do it for the rest of the people. Uh, I think it's very complicated. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. What is going on at this moment? What is the kapara? Mm -hmm. The kapir. It's a famous Ramban. We read it together last year or the year before. Do you remember it, the Ramban? On... on uh, on the bray sheet. Okay. So I want you to know everywhere in the Torah where it says kapara is this. Offering something to be able to smile and look at the person's face. Not forgiveness. Mm. That's what he was, that's what Yaakov was saying mm. to the brother. And that's what we say on Yom Kippur. The Ramban there goes through a, a list of things. So um, we say slachnanu. Mechalanu, kaperlanu, which mm -hmm. is a maximum, right? Mm -hmm. that's, the, the, it, that's the process. Mm -hmm. Slachlanu means, forgive me, I owe you a punishment. Forgive me, you're not going to punish me. But that's not, uh, all right, you're not going to hit me, right? You're not going to hit me. But mechalanu means, you say to me, I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you anything. I don't hold anything against you. Mechal. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I do something to you, saying mechalanu. Slachlanu is forgive, I'm not going to retaliate. Mechalanu means you don't owe me anything, I'm fine, you are clean, right? Mm -hmm. And then I say to myself, I can't look at him, right? He's so nice to me, he didn't punish me and he, and he, and he doesn't hold anything against me, but I, I can't, uh, you know, I don't feel like I can relate in the same way. I don't dare to come close. Kaperlanu. It's a, I don't know, a rapprochement, right? Reunion, reunion, 
Reunion is not the same as forgiveness, right? Because you could forgive, but I don't, I don't have much you to do with it. You know what I mean? It's okay. No, I'm the same. It's okay. Somebody before. slapped me around. Somebody cheated me. Good. I don't hold it against you anymore. I forgive you. I can forget about it. Fine. But you're going to be a pal? Yeah, it's like a not husband and wife. Not the same. Not the same. So, okay. So, yeah. So, Kaper is, a, is, a, is, the, is the, the total... Reunion. So that's what's happening here, Kamara, mm. I guess. Mm. So, oh, so right. he uh, didn't think that he couldn't do it. Mm. All right. The third shot, I understand. The fourth shot about Satan being there somehow. I mean, maybe it's a, to me, a Satan is always like a an externalization of something that's inside of me. Inside you know me. what I mean? Yes. But he's way. making it sound like it's a real oh, so. being of some kind. The mystics like to talk about it, the Maharal Prague and, uh, and, uh, and others, that wherever there is a greater holiness, the power of evil rises up to fight against it. Not you, not inside you, no, not inside me, right? When the Jewish people get to be more and more enthusiastic, ISIS rises to try to fight it. It's, it's a... It's a it's the way the world goes. Forces. It's the way the world goes. It's like it's like uh, the dark uh, side, you know, in in uh, in uh, Star Wars. Star you know Wars, what I mean? Yes. Yeah, because they or or the Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Same idea. Lord of the Rings. They have this, you know, goodness is going on, to and there's evil is getting more and more passionate and smoking because it's getting angry that there's something good and beautiful being done. Right? It's got, we got to fight it. So it's like clashes of opposites. Thesis and antithesis. Who was the guy who used thesis and antithesis? Uh, who? It's a, it's a non-Jewish uh, philosopher. Hegel? Hegel? Hegel's? Yeah, yeah. Could be. He used to know all this stuff. Hegel. Maybe Hegel. Thesis and antithesis. Big idea that there is, in the world, there is these forces that clash with each other. Outside. You know, in the world. So this would be something Kant. like that. No. I'm sorry? Not Kant. Kant was it Hegel. wasn't Kant. Maybe it was Hegel? Hegel, you think? Yeah, that's very... Yeah, so here it would be like this. The Satan is out there. Oh, this is going to be the moment when God reunites with the Jewish people. I've got to do something about that. Right? So he steps in there and he says, Ugh, get away from here, Aaron. And Moshe says, you punch him in the face, Aaron. Go. You know what I mean? It's like this battle of these mighty, mighty, mighty uh, figures clashing. But, but it's dependent on of him. No, no, it's in, independent. Not independent. No, yes. no, no. God, God, Satan is doing God's work yes. in fighting. Yeah, that's what the morale is saying. It's not think. an independent. It's not an independent Satan, right? God intends the world to be such that there are clashes between good and evil so that good can learn how to overcome evil. I mean, that's the victory that Hashem is looking for, right? So he wants to make a powerful Satan. And when the people are good but very weak, he's not going to create a Satan that is too powerful because then they'll never win, right? But when the people are very strong in their spirit, then the Satan rises up in spirit strength as well so that they could be a, a match, they could be a challenge. You don't put two boxers against each other, one of them is a weakling and the other one's powerful, right? Mm -hmm. You want to get a good fight, you put two champions in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, I mean, mm. okay, so that, that was pretty beautiful. That's very tough. <laughs> that was pretty beautiful. Well, maybe that's the fourth shot, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, then you do need to go to the bathroom. You? Yeah. Did you ever? Did you ever look up salt? What do you want to look up? Oh. I mean, I know. It's, I know it's the uh, the Brit Melach. Oh, the Brit Melach. Yes. <laughs> That's very nice. It's, it's, the, it's the result of uh, 
Neutralization, neutralization. Uh, uh, yes, that's right. That's one thing that you mentioned it when we were learning that time. Uh, sodium hydroxide and, uh, and HCl and hydrochloric acid. Yeah. Correct. But then I said to you, look up the Ramban on, on salt because oh. he has a different idea uh, that no. he emphasizes. Whoa! Do you remember the salt? Yes, sir. The covenant of salt and the sacrifices? So you got to go to the bathroom, you better go because I, we'll talk about <laughs> that for a minute. Because out of you will come some salt right now. All right. It's part of what the body gets rid of. Brit Melach. Ramban's on Brit Melach. It's in last week's parsha. Last week? Yeah. It's, uh, I believe so, it's in Tzad. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Do you think it's at the end of Vayikra? Where he says not to have honey, right? Not to have honey, mm -hmm. and not to have chametz. And, use and never to forget the Brit Mela, mm -hmm. the covenant of salt with... Yeah, it is in chapter 3, verse 13, in Vayikra, it was the partial report, right? That's worthwhile doing before we stop this night. I think. What time is it? It's 8.48. Okay, so that's not bad. 3, three what? 13. 3.13. 13. 13. Lo tashbit melech. He's talking about shoving before the sham. He shall lean his hand upon his hands. The louder before. 3.13. And it's not the other one. No, it's not. Vayikra. Oh, I'm sorry, 213. Oh. You're right, you're right, okay. you're right. I, I saw the page was uh, two opposite sides of the page. I'm sorry, 213. Yeah, uh, you shall salt your every meal offering with salt. So you might not discontinue the salt of your blood covenant. Covenant. Salt of the covenant, right? Covenant. So this is what we have to... So he's going to come back in a moment. We'll talk about it in a second. So you are... You are pretty happy, no? I'm very happy, sir. What are you going to do next? Um, next. How do you, how do you go from here? What do you need to do next? Mm, fill some... Papers to rest my family and rest and mainly and the girls. It, it's it's not automatic, right? I mean, no. because you have a, a residency permit doesn't mean that you can automatically no. bring that. We don't know exactly how, how, how much time you're going to take, but uh, you have to start with it. And later. Do you have a track towards citizenship now? Yes. Maybe. Once you have a once you have a proper green card, does that mean that you start ticking towards citizenship? Yeah. How long? Five years? I don't know. That's an, another, another thing we have to see because um, Can you look this thing was, was approved two or three years ago, so I don't know. We don't know if these years can count. Can count. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, in, in, in Vayikra, Pinky, Vayikra yes. 2, bait. Yud Gimel. In Vayikra, there's two partial to go. Chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. If we just take a quick look at that. 2.13. Vayikra. Two. 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 2.13. 2.13. Now do Go ahead. Below. So salt is mentioned three times there, but anyway, he calls it the salt of the Brit Elohecha, the salt of the covenant of your God. 
What does salt got to do with covenant? It's sort of strange, right? Hashem could say, I want you to put salt on all your sacrifices. What is the salt of the covenant? So the Ramban, I'm going to summarize what the Ramban says, okay? It says like this. It says like this. You have to remember that salt is a special thing, right? Apart from the natural okay. gathering of the base and, and acid, of the natural neutralization of base and acid. could be related to it, but it says like this. Salt is the most precious commodity in, on the planet. In the early development of humankind, without salt, people would starve to death and couldn't travel and couldn't keep food around, right? Because food gets rotten. Mm -hmm. If you lived in Africa and you can always hunt every day for a fish or an animal, then you could eat, right? But if you're a farmer in France, right, mm -hmm. or you're a hunter in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Germany, or you're a fisherman in Holland, then you catch a fish and you eat it that day. Tomorrow, who knows, it's going to be snowing, it's going to be icy, you may not find anything, right? So how are you going to eat, right? 